Hello, Commanders. Welcome to the Command Table, and welcome to a bassier voice. I am not feeling all that hot, so please bear with me. Uh, we have our attempts from Wicker from this morning, and we have some attempts from some other members of the community that we'll share with you. Before we hop into that, if you'd please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and if you want notifications when I drop new videos, be sure to hit that notification bell. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave that below. And you can always check out the Command Table Discord, where we have uh, the ever-progressing strategy as time goes on. We uh, will often find ways to minimize the usage of extra keys or elixirs as the raid goes on. So please feel free to join us there. It is open source. Everyone is welcome. So let's hop into it. Uh, that is something I will share with you in a minute. I think I shared it last time around. Uh, we have uh, several builds from both Anturium and Enifant that we'll go through very quickly. Uh, this is very similar to what I've been running. Um, we're using the Phylactery and the Claw here. So with the Frost Wizard, we're able to get the Freeze on that first pack of minions. And that enables the Crystal Spires to hit their maximum of three targets each, which, uh, as we'll show you here in just a second, the Crystal Spires are third on the damage, so long as they can hit at least three targets. Because it goes Archers, Hammer Throwers, then Crystal Spires. Now, with this one, he was using the Storm Collar. And uh, just one more time real quick, as you see that Storm Collar, it, it's only chaining back to this group of minions. Um, Evan has uh, shown us that he can, with a screenshot, that he can actually get that chain to go all the way down to the bottom. So it goes all the way across the top and down to the bottom, and that'll maximize your storm collar. This one is a comparable build from Enifant, and this time he's using the Celestial Spear instead. And uh, I, I think it did fairly comparable damage. Again, the vast majority of your damage is going to be done by your archers, followed by your hammer throwers, and then your crystal spires. So we'll show you that uh, after this one. We'll kind of skip ahead so you can see that he does get the heart just in time. Okay, so let me pop over and show that to you while we're thinking about it. That is right here. Um, I did the calculations for the damage per army point. So as you can see, per army point... Um, when you factor that the Celestial Spear takes up three army slots, you divide that, you end up with 7,000 damage per army point, which is less than you would get out of a group of archers. So, um, obviously, I would take a level uh, 100 Celestial Spear over, you know, eight level 50 archers. You, you gotta decide, or three level 50 archers, you'd have to decide with your unit levels where that's going to uh, weigh the other one out. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it looks like Crystal Spire is above Hammer Throwers. I had that wrong. So as long as the Crystal Spires are hitting three targets each, they will do more damage than a group of Hammer Throwers. Okay, uh, and as far as the Storm Collar and the Catapult, this is where I have a bit of a beef. The you, You'll see in this next few videos with Anturium, uh, he uses Catapult on a couple of them. And I put a question here. Um, I'm wondering why he's using the Standard of the Ancient Defender. Because I think at rank 4 you can get a maximum of 40% bonus damage. And since he's got so few units, it, it might have been better to have gone with the Troll Giant's Toe. Because I think you'd get about an 80%, uh, 75 or 80%, somewhere in that vicinity damage bonus. You could even go with Claw of the Frost Dragon, since he's using the Frost Wizard, and I think he might have got more damage that way. So, uh, yeah, um, Banner was an interesting choice. Uh, or, not Banner. Sorry, I keep calling it Banner. Standard of the Ancient Defender. I, I think there are better options uh, that we've discovered as time went on, but obviously he did just fine. He got it down. That wasn't a problem. Okay, now here's where the Catapults come in, and my issue with the Catapults is yeah, sometimes they'll hit these groups of nine, but other times they'll just hit the center boss or one of the bears or the smaller groups up front, because I think there's only six in each of these front groups. So um, 
Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. So the catapult, you're not getting as much damage as you would from just stacking a bunch of archers or hammer throwers. And again, let me uh, pop back over here to this and explain. You know, 496 per hit, but you'd have to hit 10 units to get 5,000 damage, and there's only 9 in a group of minions. So you're still only doing half as much damage, approximately, as a group of archers. So, And again, that's per army point. So um, it doesn't factor in how many units are being hit. Another thing to consider is that with the catapult, you're hitting the random targets all over that side of the map, whereas the archers and the crystal spires will be hitting the targets that are right in the very front, which are usually the frozen targets. So your catapult, while, you know, it, yeah, it hits a lot of stuff, it has to hit more than that in order to equal the damage per army point, and it's not going to guarantee a hit on a frozen target. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of the catapult for this. Okay, uh, enough of that. Let's pop back over here. Okay, so he did uh, the catapult. Let's check out his uh, celestial spear with the catapult and the four reinos. Uh, you know, those are only level 50 for three of those. I think the other one's 80-something. But they can crank out that damage. It's, it's very, very stout damage. Again, I think he'd get more damage with the toe, and I would drop that catapult. Uh, Stormcaller, I'm not a huge fan of the Stormcaller for this either. Again, because the Stormcaller is going to hit the front frozen unit, but every unit that it chains to after that is not going to be frozen most of the time. So it's just not worth it in my opinion. But anyway, uh, he, he gets the job done. He, and he comes up with some really clever strategies. So thank you, Anturium. Thank you, Enifant. Let's uh, pop over to what I've done for today. Uh, we also have some screenshots on the TCT Discord of people's builds, but I, I usually don't include those on this video. I just include the actual videos. So here is my setup for SR15. I think it's going to run through the stats. Yep. Okay, so I've got seven crystal spires, all with... Uh, whatever damage I had available and double reload. Uh, pretty much everything with uh, reload wherever it will go, followed by damage when whatever's left. The Frost Wizard I wasn't terribly concerned about, I just left the block there, because he's not there for damage, he's just there to apply the freeze debuff. So using Claw of the Frost Dragon, as you see, 170% increased damage. Then the Phylactery, because we're not using the Time Elixir, and that should get a fair amount done. I, I do have rank 4, and you'll, as you'll see, every 2 seconds on that, we're going to get a spear strike. So rank 4 is, is raining fire like crazy. I can only imagine what every 1 second will be like once we get that to rank 5. That was changed in this last patch, where they dropped the initial uh, time between spear strikes down a second. So every level up after that, it just you lose a second between spear strikes, so it's going to be going off a lot. Uh, I've got my Celestial Spear up there. He's cranking it. Um, again, uh, you'd probably be just fine uh, dropping the Celestial Spear and getting some Hammer Throwers or more Crystal Spires. Uh, my problem was that I didn't have the Power Stones to equip all of them, so I figured it would be better to equip the one Celestial Spear with the best Power Stones that I had, instead of um, not having enough Power Stones to cover three groups of Hammer Throwers. Okay, so here, now what I've done with this one, I've, uh, well, you can see the Power Stones if you like, but I've lined up the Hammer Throwers in such a way that they're all going to run past the Celestial, uh, the Celestial Spear, the Crystal Spire, and they're going to group up here in the front and all attack the frozen targets. Uh, the Archers, we don't have to worry about them. They've got plenty of range to shoot over the Crystal Spires and hit. But um, it's the Hammer Throwers that we don't want getting bogged down. So that's why I've lined them up like this. That way they all attack frozen targets. Nothing's attacking down here, I don't think. And the Chaos Archers were just because I needed another high-level unit, and I had burned through all my shards 
on my archers and my hammer throwers. So, um, chaos archers clearly not the best because they're attacking a bunch of random targets that are not frozen. So, uh, if you do have some shards to spare, I would recommend leveling up something else. Uh, even, you know, just another group of hammer throwers or archers to level 50 just to get that second power stone slot if you've got it. But yeah, it, it's just not worth it for the chaos archers. Um, for this one, this is my SR13 profile. I decided to try out the swarm, and I don't think it goes over very well if I remember correctly. They did nerf the Primal Warhorn not too long ago, and it is just not pushing like it used to. Uh, yeah, you look how slow that health is going down. We're going to skip ahead just so you can see where we end up. We get to about 25% when we fail. And what I do is I drop both of the elixirs and just spend another key to cap it off, because I can totally get 25% health with no elixirs. So you, if you do manage to get within striking distance without elixirs, just drop them, and that'll save you. Because I've, I've made the mistake before where I didn't unequip those elixirs, and I thought, gee, I just overkilled that cap off with a completely unnecessary double elixir spend. So uh, just be wary of that. Don't uh, spend any more elixirs than you absolutely have to, right? Okay, so I switched to ranged on that SR13 profile to see how it would go. And this is just a one elixir with the elixir of accuracy. And it's going to run through the stats on everybody and the artifacts. But, um, oh, I needed to roll that. I guess I'll have to go back and do that. Again, double reload and damage wherever you can stash it. And just uh, let loose. So, pretty straightforward, and we're about to get there. Again, those Chaos Archers, um, you know, I, again, I'm not feeling so hot, so I'm not thinking at full capacity, but I, I should have dropped those after that initial attempt on my main. But I, having them way back here, it kind of forces them to attack the Frozen targets for a little bit until they work their way in. So, if you have to, try and bog them behind the other Archers, and that'll save you a little bit of trouble because they don't spend as much time shooting non-frozen targets. So this one ended up being a bit of a close call but I think I still got it. Yep, there we go. With two seconds to spare we're able to knock it out. Now um, if you're having trouble uh, getting there then you can drop the phylactery and use ring and add the time elixir and that should substantially increase your damage. You do not want to use the phylactery with the time elixir because all your units die at 30 seconds anyway. Okay, down to SR12. This is fourth profile. Okay, we went with time and melee, or time and power. Um, didn't have these lined up properly. Half my units are not attacking the frozen targets. We wanted them all on here, so that could have gone better. Let's go ahead and fast forward a bit. Uh, fail. So didn't quite get there. Uh, again, use that trick. You just drop both of your elixirs and cap off that last 4%. So we'll just go ahead and skip through. You can see what I did there. Uh, let's see. I, okay, don't do this. I thought, hey, Claw has a huge damage bonus, and I've got these Frost Knights up front. They're going to apply freeze to the bulk of the targets that I'm going to be attacking. Well, I do 25% um, of the boss's health less with the Claw. So even after the Primal Warhorn nerf, the Primal Warhorn is still better than the Claw as far as swarms are concerned. Okay, so uh, we're down to SR10. This is profile number five. Yes, I may need counseling. <laughs> Stop creating profiles. Uh, but again, I'm back to that ranged build. Uh, you'll notice way in the back here, these archers are all getting clumped up and they're not attacking for that first little bit because they're trying to push forward to get in range. You can solve that by moving some of your archers down behind the hammer throwers. And the hammer throwers, as you see, run way up. So those archers would run forward until they get into range and they wouldn't get congested. So there we go. We're not going to make it. So we fail on that one, uh, 
but um, what I do, I, I capped it off. I didn't record that, but again, drop your elixirs if you've just got a little, a few percent left, and just run it and cap it off without spending those elixirs. But I switched it out where I dropped the phylactery and went for the ring and the time elixir. So again, make sure you don't use the time elixir if you're using phylactery. But if phylactery isn't getting the job done, then you can drop phylactery, use the ring, and get uh, your time elixir on there. So for this one, I'll go ahead and fast forward because this is pretty uneventful. I do get it just barely in time. So that's a way to maximize your damage. So that's pretty much it for today. Here's an SR1 for anybody who cares. You just throw everything in the kitchen sink at it and it usually gets the job done. But uh, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions on how we can improve, uh, you can either leave them here on YouTube or you can join us on the Command Table Discord channel. And, ooh, that is not what I wanted. There we go. You can join us on the Command Table Discord channel. The link will be in the description. You can share your uh, thoughts on how to improve it there. Also, a special thank you to everybody who contributed today. Uh, we had a lot of people help out. Breather, Stu Van, Anifant, Evan, Anturium, and Dostenia. So, thank you for everybody for contributing. And please, do not forget to subscribe. That is our next big goal. We're aiming for a thousand, and we're two-thirds of the way there. So thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and we will have more content for you in the near future.